No parent ever expects to walk into the doors of Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, but parents who have know life can change in an instant and have you longing for what felt safe in your life before. KXLY4's Melissa Luck introduces us to one Spokane teenager holding on to the familiar despite nearly losing everything. Writing for me my whole life has just been a place to relax and I don't think about anything. I just think about the horse and I think about what I'm doing. You can see it in both their eyes, a bond undeniable. And when you understand what Brittany Davis has been through, you'll realize why being out here with Cloudy is so special. Seeing her just makes me so happy and seeing all the other horses is just, this is where I like to be. This is my safe place. A place Brittany yearned for during an ordeal she nearly didn't survive. She went into the hospital and we weren't sure. We just thought she was going to get some fluids and go home later that day. And then you end up, you know, talking with the doctor and, and then they tell you that uh, your daughter may need to go on life support. In the beginning, I wasn't aware of how close I was to being basically dying. And um, when my family kind of told me what was going on, I just, I felt like it was a dream. I, I would lay in the bed and be like, why am I not waking up from this? Brittany had a serious blood infection. Saving her life meant putting her under in a medically induced coma that stretched on for weeks. You sit by their side and you talk to them and you touch their hand and you rub their hand and you just, uh, you, that's what you do, you know, and you can't leave them. Some parents compare it to a free fall out of control as your child's life hangs in the balance. The Davis family found a safety net in the staff at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. When you're upset as a parent and it's hard for you to smile, you can't let your child see that. You have to smile for them as well. And that's where they come into play and, and help us out. And as she came out of that coma, a team was waiting for her. I think the child life specialist mainly helped me with coping with things. Um, she would uh, uh, bring me headphones, um, Thing. She'd always offer coloring, things to read, just like simple things, just so you're not sitting there in bed like depressed and upset all the time. With their help, Brittany grew stronger, found something inside herself she never knew existed. And I wish it wouldn't have happened this way, but I feel like I am a better person. And uh, I mean, my family are a lot closer than we ever have been. Um, and I just value my life and things in my life a lot more now. Every day now is the future that once felt uncertain. Every day with Cloudy, a reminder of what life once was and could be again. She takes life now one step at a time, every step a milestone. So I'll graduate with my class and I'm actually going to hopefully walk at graduation. Hear that? To walk with your Central Valley High School graduating class, celebrating 12 years of school and five months on the journey back to life. Until then, a couple more surgeries, getting stronger, and quite literally, getting back on this horse. I have to be able to trust myself and know that if I were to come off, I could get back up or I can ride my horse, I'm strong enough to. So hopefully, once I start walking, I can sit on her and go from there. Just like Brittany, Evan Clark's story has the same theme, life changing in the blink of an eye. The hockey player went to bed one night, never realizing the next morning, Sacred Heart Children's Hospital would be his home for over a month. It was all at once. Like, as a teenager, you think, this can never happen to me, and bam, it does. Evan Clark loves being on the ice. No, I just kind of show up and play hockey, you know? It's, it's nothing much to me average day, you know. Last October, the 15-year-old Lakeside High School student and hockey goalie went to bed. And I wake up, have a tense stomach. You know, we all thought it was the flu. Turns out it was much worse. And then eventually found out I had a um, blockage in my intestines. I know my family was scared to death. And then went to the hospital, you know, came here and stayed about 37 days the first trip. An eternity for a teenager. I missed out on most of the hockey season, so I felt a little bit bummed by that. Evan went through three surgeries. You know, it was really a big mental battle for me. Bored by days on end doing nothing, but Sacred Heart has that covered. We offer jewelry making, creative writing, dance and movement, um, 
visual arts, music. Therapy programs for patients to help with the stresses and anxiety of being in a hospital. The Arts and Healing is a program that um, offers patients here at the hospital, in the Children's Hospital, the opportunity to get creative. Visits from pets. And what's your doggy's name? A new favorite, music mixing with Gonzaga graduate student Casey. I feel like I've been given so much and given so many opportunities that it's kind of the least I can do is give as much back as I can possibly can. There's even dancing with Judy. All these people volunteering their time to break up the monotony to dull the pain for these young patients. For a segment of time, whether it be five minutes or 45 minutes, to take them away. For Evan, the advantage of age gave him a backstage pass to parts of the hospital many people never see. This hallway was fun too. Taking us down the halls he used to walk daily to build his strength. I really enjoyed the chapel. I thought that was like the coolest thing. And they say it's haunted. So that was really cool. With some help from above, Evan healed and he got back on the ice. And I got to play in two games. It was really, really awesome move you and you feel the need to help, you can still give. Call the number on your screen now. You're making a miracle for these families and the others that will find themselves in the same situation. You can also go to KXOY.com and click the link to make your donation. Some children receiving treatment at Sacred Heart were sick long before they were born, and after being brought into the world, their medical care will be lifelong. It's not something any family expects, which is why Sacred Heart has the Sunflower Program. It's designed to help families come up with a plan, connect them with resources, and give them support through this difficult time. For the Pierce family, that support has changed their son's life. Here's KXY4's Alyssa Donovan with Tristan's story. Tristan Pierce is a fighter. I always saw him as being able to survive. His parents in his corner from the moment they knew he would be different. I went in for my routine ultrasound and it was a very long ultrasound. They didn't tell me anything and then the nurse called me up later that afternoon. The baby had hydrocephalus or water on the brain which can lead to other syndromes. The prognosis did not sound good. It was that maybe my child would survive to, um, to birth and then would be a vegetable. Corinne and Don were advised to medically terminate the pregnancy, but they said no. And Tristan was born with a rare birth defect called rhombencephalosynapsis. He has the most, what they call the most complete of the syndromes. Everything that could be wrong in Tristan's brain is. For several years, Tristan had few medical problems, but there were other battles. I have three daughters, Don has two daughters, so there's five sisters. Just seeing how different he was from my daughters developmentally, at first it was hard. After four years though, he, uh, he had a failure. A shunt placed in Tristan's head when he was born was malfunctioning. Tristan had to undergo several surgeries. As he healed, Don and Corinne saw a new strength in their son they had never seen before. That was during the time we were starting to find out that he was understanding things, like we could ask him where a red circle was and he could point it out, mm -hmm. or he could point out a number or a, a shape or a color. But then, disaster struck. I didn't actually have any fear of losing him or um, him not surviving up until this past year. It was a MRSA infection. Tristan was hospitalized in the pediatric intensive care unit. They have to externalize the shunt and it has to be infection free for a long time before they can actually put it back inside of him. He was put into an induced coma to keep him from pulling out the external shunt. It, it just hit me that He's, he's a lot more fragile than he appears. His family realized this was a fight Tristan may not win. There was times when we didn't know if he was going to make it. But after 35 days, Tristan was sent home healthier than ever. From the moment that I gave birth to him, I just knew that, that he was a fighter. Tristan continues to fight every day to learn skills that many of us take for granted and to teach his family 
about the gift of life. He's the rock star of the family. Tristan has given us just a desire to live our lives to the fullest and to enjoy him and for who he is. Call now and donate. You can also go to KXOI.com and click the link to make that donation. What does it mean to be Brody Brave? The WSU football team can tell you next.